Welcome. I'm Sue Landay, president of Trainers Warehouse, and I have with me today Rich Hostetler. And uh, we welcome to our show and share. We're going to learn about the U Lead card deck as and a whole bunch of exercises and activities that you can do with it to help people connect with one another, to debrief, to break the ice, all sorts of things. Um, Rich is the chief ideation trailblazer at ULEAD. He's been there for 20, 25 plus years, right? Um, the company was started in 1998 and he spends a lot of time training trainers, training educators, training students in how to connect with one another and make use of some of the resources. So Rich, I'm gonna let you take it away with that because um, I know you have a lot to share with us and it is gonna be an interactive session. I'll be breaking in if folks have questions um, pop in, but um, let's take it from there. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Uh, great to be with you today. I would love to, uh, if you want to pop it into chat, um, kind of say either where you're from or like if a little bit like, are you an educator or you're, I'm interested, I'm always intrigued by where people are coming from and maybe uh, why you showed up today. And uh, we are going to be doing some play with these facilitation cards. So back in the day, we actually developed these internally for ourselves. Uh, we serve schools and agencies, boys and girls clubs. Uh, we're actually in local high schools. We work with teachers and educators, um, all kinds of groups for leadership development and team building. And um, in this experience, we developed these uh, from all the ideas that we came across and then some of our own ideation we, we had a deck of playing cards and we stuck a bunch of stickers on them <laughs> and started using them in our trainings. And people are like, where do we get those? And we're like, oh, we need to like clean it up, get serious about it and put a little research into it. So we've had focus groups, we've had educators and, and people. And uh, so we have this deck of, of cards, facilitation cards. Um, and as Sue said there, they've really, uh, they're being used all across the US and Canada uh, in Hawaii and the education system, they haven't flown us there to do trainings. That's one thing that we're we're still working on. But uh, uh, you know, there's ten elements on these cards, and all of the the deck has uh, instructions for ten activities. But I can tell you today that the burgeoning list of activities is over eighty, uh, because people just keep coming up with ideas of how to combine the elements and how to how to create metaphors and how to use them for connection. So um thought we would do a little bit of play today. I created a short slide deck and uh, I'm going to invite participation. Uh, thank you for uh, checking in on Slack a little bit here. It's, it's really interesting to hear where people are from uh, and a little bit of your background. And, uh, you know, as I look here, uh, you know, when we are working with people. We do have like mental health agencies using these for like uh, some of uh, the counselors and skilled skilled trainers with youth. Uh, we definitely have teachers and youth workers, uh, uh, people who do some corporate trainings, all kinds of uh, different uses for them. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, y'all are welcome. Uh, I you know. You, there's no, no judgment if you don't turn your camera on, but um, we would also love, I would love to, to see you as well as uh, hear from you either in chat or uh, also it could just be that you are uh, unmuting yourself and speaking out. So I'll uh, share a little bit here. Um, and just to kind of introduce some of the activities and I may invite you to uh, speak out or participate. Um, so this is, uh, this is we call this side one of these cards. And uh, you'll notice a bunch of things on here. Um, so right now we're gonna focus on the one mixer question, which is underneath the animal at the top of the card. And so I'm gonna throw this out actually as a question for us today, just to see, uh, who the dancers are maybe in the in the room here. So uh, would you rather dance all night 
or sleep all day. Anybody, uh, would you like to speak that out? Unmute yourself and speak that's it out a, or throw something in chat. An easy one for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably in the uh, the dance all day. Dance all night, dance all night. That's what it is. Oh, that could be <laughs> dancing all day as well. So, okay, we got, uh, uh, we have a couple of sleepers and, and a dancer there showing up. So anyone else? Your thoughts, would you rather dance all night or sleep all day? It looks like it's a pretty good mix, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Artists, okay, it depends. I hope to sleep all day when school closes tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that might be sleeping for more than one day, maybe several days. Um, so <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end, but um, these activities, a lot of times we'll do partner to partner. And uh, we'll have people like, I would ask this question of my partner, they would answer, and then they would ask their question and I would answer. Uh, one of the techniques we found with them is then at the end of whatever activity, you switch cards, you go to another partner. You might do three iterations or tries on this. Um, the other thing that you can do, so all of these elements, you can iterate and if you have more time, you can go into it deeper. We have, uh, I call it the mixer question interview style. So instead of just hearing your answer, I'm going to probe more deeply about why you feel that way. So you're like, Sue, why would you dance all day? I mean. Um, well, first of all, dancing just kind of makes me happy. <laughs> Okay, so um, it takes you to a happy place. It takes me to a happy place. Okay. And um, I I like the days. I'm, I'm not a sleep all day person. I love to just kind of dive in and get stuff done and see people, be with people. I, mean, I guess I'm just kind of an active person. Yeah. So we did this interview style at an educator, a thought leader conference uh, in South Bend, Indiana. And somebody came up to me afterward and said, you know, that was kind of a corny question, but uh, I started this conversation and now like we exchanged like our emails and contact information. And we discovered that we had this in common and everything. So it's a way uh, I call it foaming the runway. So a conversation does not crash. Like it actually gets you started in something that lowers inhibitions. It's like, well, it's about this over here, but then you start to like open up to each other. Uh, so, what's so that's the past part of this, Rich. The, the passing of the card. Oh, it's the past physically passing the card. Physically passing the card. So okay. you each have your card. Uh, you each share. Uh, you know, you ask the question, they respond. They ask theirs, you respond. You switch. Okay. For most of the activities, we're doing that because then you can't like go through and like kind of memorize your card, and uh, it kind of it kind of gets you in a flow and makes it feel like, oh, now what's on the card now, right? I know these elements, but the or now it's a different question. It's a different picture, that kind of thing. Um, it really matters how you how you engage with it. Okay, let's see if I can actually uh, how move many, on. Before you go on to the next the next activity, yeah. remind yeah. me how many cards are in the deck. It's 52, yeah? Uh, no, it's 54 because it's actually a playing deck. If you notice, there's okay. a suit, like a suit. So the uh, clubs and spades and hearts. Uh, so it's actually a deck of cards. Like I said at the beginning, we took a deck of cards and we stuck stickers in them. So there are uh, 54 uh, cards in the deck, including right. uh, the Jokers. Mm -hmm. Show us another activity then. All right, let's move on here. Uh, this is one of my favorite activities. A lot of these, you can say uh, they're starters or whatever. This one can go really deep. So I would be interested uh, to play a little bit with you all here, either in chat or feel free to speak it out. So we're gonna look at uh, these icons in the middle. So we have a gas pump and a bicycle. So um, we'll just play this and then I'll tell you if we have like a group of people. So if you uh, could have find some things in common between these two icons in the middle of these cards, what might you, how can you, what are some common common bonds or common ground that you could find between a gas pump and a bicycle. Let's try this on and see what happens. 
Right. You guys can feel free to unmute yourselves. Yeah, you can unmute yourselves or feel free to use chat. Well, okay, yeah. so Sarah says transportation. Go ahead. Same thing. They're both related to transportation. Transportation. Is that it? What do you think? They both have like kind of a rubber tube. One's in the wheel and one's the... Uh... Okay, yeah, the gas pump has Maybe. like... A, yeah. Oh, gas station service, both of them. Yeah. Yes, Robin. Uh, so what I what I was thinking is one takes like human fuel and the other one disperses fuel, right? Totally. Yeah, I didn't think about the uh Sue the like the rubber hose and the tire. I know, trying to be creative here for you, Rich. <laughs> yeah, nice. Well done. Well done. Yeah, so uh we could we could go on, but so the activity and you'll you'll find so again you have partner to partner they're going around first of all like if you have a group it's like uh, in the next 90 seconds i'd like you to mill about the space and using the icon in the middle side of this card you're comparing icons what uh to try to find somebody who has an icon with something in common with yours when you find them stick with them and then the group circles up they show their icons and they talk about what they found in common Sometimes you'll get like a glove, you know, and a hammer or, you know, things that are really easy to connect with. Oh, they both have handles. See, see what's happening here. So, and, and it goes on. And then uh, other times people will really struggle or they have to really use like their imagination. Sometimes you'll get you like three people. You then yeah. to the next step, Rich, and mm -hmm. have them relate whatever that kind of commonality is to something in their own experience. Or do you really just kind of stick with the cards? Yes and no. Okay. Sometimes we'll use this as a, uh, we call it a primer. Like we do some things on personality differences and, uh, you know, actually having assessments and stuff. And so if you're talking about differences in a group, you can just use it as a metaphor to say, hey, sometimes uh, it's really easy to connect with people that are like you. And then if people maybe that annoy you or not as much like you, it's like, oh, you have to like be a little creative and, and get out of yourself and think a little bit more. Mm. Um, so you can really take it in a deeper direction um, is very much a possibility and, and talk about things in life that you might have in common. Right. Okay. So um, that's Do one of my favorites. More? Uh, yeah, let's keep keep going here. Uh, good creativity there, everybody. We're going to just keep moving on here. So. Uh, this one I will describe uh, because we'd have to like uh, have our cameras on for a while and do some craziness if we went, it would take longer. So uh, uh, here we're looking at, so we've looked at the mixer question underneath the animal. Uh, we've looked at the icon. Now we're looking, if you look uh, to the left side of this card, there's emotion words on all the cards. There are animals. There are uh, nine different animals, and there are six of each of those animals in the deck. Um, so there's there's activities you can do for grouping people too. Like you can have all the elephants get together, all the dogs, all the cats. We like to do it that they can only make the sound of the animal to find their group. That one is that one is really interesting uh, for adults as well uh, to do that one. So, and then you have an action word over on the right side of the card toward the top. So excited elephant spin, um, which if you want to put on some music and have people exemplify a dance, that's a great improv game uh, because uh, you can also say, hey, let's do the excited elephant dance. And then somebody does that. And then the rest of the group has to emulate their dance. Uh, but for this one, a team high five, you're having a group of people get together and you using these three, using the emotion, animal, and the, the action, they're creating a some type of a team cheer that will exemplify the emotion, have something of, uh, so the elephant, uh, some type of a thing to designate the animal, and then an actual uh, action that will, will represent that. Um, it's actually a lot of fun. And if you're having competitive kinds of activities, uh, it's something that then the groups take on those identities. So the excited elephant spinners are going against the 
you know, the raucous monkey dancers or whatever it is uh, <laughs> that, that they have. So um, a lot can be done. I hope you're starting to see a little bit um, these elements, the 10 elements can stand on their own. And there can be, there's a lot of infinite combinations that you can use. Uh, and they can be for light and really funny or kind of crazy, like a big activity kinds of stuff, which would be this one, the team high five. Um, you want them to go at it with some passion and go big, or they can be more reflective and thoughtful kinds of uh, things that are much more partner to partner and, and quiet activities. So Feel free along the way. Energizers or, yeah. you know, you've got energizers, icebreakers so far yeah. and reflective, you were saying about content and relating it to yeah. learning or something in particular. Yeah. So, so what we, um, what we talk about, kind of the little catchphrase that we've come on is we feel like this is connection in your pocket. Like uh, it really gives you, it gives you a set of activities, but it gives you uh, some tools to play with that can start things off, can energize people, can go deeper in conversation. Um, and they really are ways to, uh, and we keep exploring and trying on new activities just with our team as well. Um, Sometimes it's like, yeah, that didn't work. Um, or we would change it up. Uh, we often, I do a lot of uh, demonstrations with groups or, or, or teach them to use the cards. And then I always pause and say, and I would say that today too, uh, what's your idea? How would you change this idea? It's not like there's a set uh, number of activities that you could only do with this. Uh, it's really infinite and up to your creativity as well. Why don't you go ahead and oh. show us a couple more? And then okay. unless people have specific questions, feel free to um, uh, to put them in the chat or, or unmute yourself. Because I know you also had a couple of ideas for the photo side of the cards, right? Because these are two-sided. That's right. Yep. And I've got a couple of those uh, teed up here as well. So uh, we're going to come back to, this is another one of my favorites. Um, and this can get... You can do this as like one full team or you can set up smaller teams of uh, even like from partners up to three or four people and make it competitive. Uh, at the same time, you're trying to bring out some creativity or brainstorming. So let's try this on for ourselves here today, uh, because as I've seen people check in, we've got some we got some high quality individuals on this call today. <laughs> so, uh so we're looking here at the icon again. And so here we have the classic umbrella. Um, we are going to, in the next 90 seconds or whatever, uh, come up with as many ideas for how this could be used other than its original purpose. Hmm. Okay. So either speak it out or put it in the chat. So let's see how many we can come up with here in the next 90 seconds. And it's for the umbrella, you said? It's for the umbrella. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I love measuring. measuring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're trying to, you're making, you're baking something and you got to, you don't have a mix, like a spoon, a teaspoon. It's like for a hook, nice, a shield, a hook. No, measuring more like, you know, you want to see how large something is to buy it, right? So you want to you go to the store oh, yeah. and you the gap between, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. That kind of measuring, for sure. A lampshade. Oh. That's, a, that's a good one. That actually, <laughs> yeah, for a lampshade. A dancing prop, of course. There you go, Sue. So if you're going to dance all day, you might. You know, I need my umbrella, right? I think you better get your umbrella out. So I'm I just envision somebody crossing the street and a bus is coming. So you use the hook end to like grab them by the neck and pull them back in the sidewalk. Yeah, that's a good one too. Oh, that would hold a lot of chip dip and or chips and salsa. Turn that thing upside down for a snack. Look, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so uh, you're getting the idea with this and uh, groups will literally come up with 15 or 20 uh, different ideas, especially if you put some competitive juices at work. And uh, I think it's a really interesting way to, to get groups to um, without having to think about brainstorming, to just start brainstorming. 
It's kind of a, a way to say, hey, this is don't have your judgment hats on right now. Like, let it fly. Let the ideas come. And uh, yeah, and the the big thing um, is really interesting on, on the time on this. So just as we said, one of the uh, secret sauces for the cards is the whole thing of partners and trading. The other one is time limits. Uh, so we always like to uh, stop things before people are done so that they feel like we always I kind of they feel a little bit like uh, there's some urgency to it. And so we will, you know, you can you can say whatever time frame you can say in the next 90 seconds, you might give them two and a half minutes or three. But you want that thing of like, oh, like I have to be alive and awake, like I'm uh, involved in something that requires my attention. So often on this one, uh, we really do try to keep it, you know, to like uh, 90 seconds to two minutes. And uh, we may give them a little bit more, um, but that's a very good question on the timing on it. And you can explore that as well. If you if you are going to do some other pieces with it, you can uh, you could have several groups do the same object and then compare their lists, and they have to cross up everything that is the same and to see what are the different ideas. So all kinds of, of possibilities and ideas. So. Uh, Sue, do you want me to move on to something yeah, on the other side? Let's move on. Let's move on because I also um, let's talk about the the a couple of ideas with the photo side. I want to be conscious of time and respect For people's sure. time needs, yep. but I also know that um, you can do some of these activities online as well as using the physical decks. So, right. you know, take us through some of some of that. Okay. Sure. So um, on the, this is the other side, the image side of the card. And you will notice also there is, uh, there are letters on this side. So there are uh, two elements on this side. There are two full alphabets in the deck. So there are word games and different things that you can do. So teachers, uh, there, there are math and word games and STEM activities. There's academic kinds of stuff that you can do. And then there's all kinds of team building or uh, like self-aware emotional intelligence activities. Uh, this particular one is a another kind of a team building activity. And I just put up three cards here uh, where, so every person has a card and you're going to uh, start the story like in a faraway galaxy or once upon a time, or uh, just a person starting uh, utilizing the picture. They need to somehow incorporate the picture into their frame or their their sentence or two of their starting story so for example um you know i was in california one day and i was uh driving across the golden gate bridge and so person two would come in and i looked down and i was really surprised to see a whole bunch of hippos swimming there in the bay and so I drove, I was so shocked. I went down uh, uh, when we crossed the bridge and I saw these boats and I went out and you get the idea. That's so people are yeah. uh, coming together and creating a story together. Sometimes uh, we'll give an extra challenge to say you have to go around three times. So they have to like embellish it or take it even in another direction. So uh, usually we'll get maybe, oh, I don't know, six or six or eight people maybe together. So uh, and then at the end, you can ask people to share the highlights of their story. Uh, some will go big and they'll have characters and things that happen in it. And uh, others, you know, will find uh, it's just a really fun way to collaborate together and recognize uh, we all have perspectives. We all have something to add to a story. Um, so that's uh, that's one way that, that you could use the image. You could do the same thing with the icons on the other side of the card. So you can start to see the possibilities uh, of using or interchanging different of the card elements. I can do one more here, Sue, and then uh, we can come up for air on a couple of questions and I can uh, load the online piece then as to do that. Um, I'll, I'll do two more real quick here. So, um, yeah, we all have something to add to the story. Um, so you're getting the idea, depending on your uh, topic or where you want to take a group, 
you can debrief the activity in a way that fits your topic or what you're wanting to focus on. Um, and that actually can go pretty deep. Um, it can, e it can be surface. It can be something that's just for fun or it can actually go, uh, and lead into a deeper conversation. This is a, a fun, I just pulled out these three for fun. So mm -hmm. I said there are two alphabets on the deck and, uh, this is one where you might split the deck in half, split so each team has an alphabet and you come up with a topic area. So this one, I was just thinking this morning of summer because summer is here now. And uh, so again, give a time limit uh, in the next four minutes, your team and have somebody uh, will write them down, have a note card or have uh, yeah, a paper and a, a pen, right? Uh, create as many words as you can that relate to that theme. Right. So then they're looking at all the letters and trying to find and come up with a list of words based on the letters that, of their alphabet that they have that relate to the theme of summer. Um, so that one is uh, that one is a fun activity and it requires them to do some uh, things there. Uh, here's one. Let's let's try this one on and then we'll and we'll stop. So uh, <laughs> this is also one of my favorites. Uh, we call it something I bring. By the way, the names of the activities don't really matter either. But uh, so you can name them whatever you want. Um, but something I bring is kind of like if you think of a skill or ability that you bring to your work or to life, or it can be a personality temperament. Uh, so you're using the image to share with the group. So everybody has a card or oftentimes what we'll do is like with the cards, we'll, uh, I'll throw them all out on a table or on the floor and uh, ask people, uh, uh, as you look at these cards, try to find a card that, that picks up uh, a characteristic of your personality or a skill or an ability that you have. Uh, so you can, you can go either direction on that, but something that represents uh, something of your uniqueness of what you have to bring. And so, um, or you could say something that you don't bring. So I picked two here uh, for myself this morning. Um, the penguins, that represents me because one of the things um, that I bring is the desire and, and um, the practice of not needing to go with the flow. I actually like to come up with new ideas and um, some of them are really bad ideas. <laughs> But I love to come up with them. So it's like you're the ideation trailblazer. I, I'm you the ideation trailblazer. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people talking over here, but what about this? And what about that? Um, so this one I chose, and I think, you know, we haven't really done it this way very much because we're very strength based. But um, I was thinking how much I am not like this stack of rocks over here. And I know there's a name for that. Uh, you know, my personality assessments, the organization part of it is very low usually. So <laughs> I appreciate people who are good at that, but that isn't really me. Um, so you kind of get the idea with that, like you're using the image as a metaphor to reveal something about yourself. Uh, the one thing I found with this is sometimes people struggle with this and somebody else will find a card and say, hey, Barry this uh, what about that like I, I see you like this or they'll affirm like mm. yeah you really do like to have different ideas yeah you really struggle with organization and so <laughs> it gets people uh relating with and talking about strengths and growth areas in ways maybe that aren't as threatening as just sitting there saying man you really struggle at that <laughs> so um so many possibilities it's really it's very cool uh I don't recall if you have a facilitator, um, uh, you know, set of notes with some of these activities, or if we can put these together for folks. So in each deck, we have um, both a little how to use, like a little uh, for for uh, a little fold out on some of the things I talked about of how to use the cards. Okay. You know, uh, timing. You got to go big. Uh, the big thing for us is if we're inviting people to play, like to get in there, uh, I'll often ask for a, someone to demonstrate, hey, would you come up and uh, demonstrate this activity with me and then get very clear on the instructions? Mm -hmm. Here's what we're going to do. 
very clear on where to focus them on the card. Okay, we're on the word side of the card. Look at the question. It's right underneath the animal. That's what we're focusing on for this activity. Mm -hmm. So clarity, uh, going big, uh, really playing. They're playing cards. So playing with the people um, and getting, you know, inviting them into. Uh, a lot of times we'll say in a moment, but not yet. Mm -hmm. We're going to invite you to look at the question. Can everybody find the question on the card? It's right underneath the animal. Give me a thumbs up if you write into uh, invite the group in. Those things are important. Um, it lets people know because it can be, you know, you start to look at them and it's like, oh, there's a lot on there, right? Yes. Yeah, so really facilitation tips to help them focus. Yeah. So we have the facilitation tips and the directions for for each of the, there's at least uh, one activity for each of the elements on the card are included in each deck. Nice. Um, we have had some requests to make an actual booklet because as I said, we have like 80 activities and growing. It's on our list to-do list to make an activity uh, instruction book. All right, let, us, let me know if I can help. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you might know someone who could help with that, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, um, and yeah. Let me just ask the folks who are still on, um, would you like to see the online version or is that something that you'd rather not take the time to see it right now? I'm, I'm seeing one yes, please, at least. So. Okay. Let's do it. All righty. So I'm going to stop my share and then go back into it here. Um. Yep. Oh, what am I doing here? Okay. All right. Um, that didn't do it. Okay. You try again. You try it <laughs> again here. I just want my. Well. Okay. As you can see, uh, you you said like my organization thing was really uh, okay. Um. No, that's not what I want. So far, we're not seeing your screen. No, you're not seeing. You're not seeing. Okay, the screen. just checking. Uh huh. Uh, um, let's show the desktop. Okay, I see what's going on. Okay, let me see if I can get to my. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, you can see the screen now. Okay, I had this pulled up earlier here. I'm going to have to go into uh, some my Zoom screen is holding up my, where I'd go into my, um, my link to the. To it's the always library. when you're like live with, uh, with the group that you're like, mm -hmm. you know, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> um, I would be happy to. Yeah, let people, oh, here we go. Let me see if I can pull this up now. It's called a Card Connect, and it actually, it will it will deal the cards out uh, one at a time. So, okay, there's a card. So card. while you're doing that, I'll, I'll also tell the group that um, maybe a year or so ago, we were looking at just different deck tools as well. And mm -hmm. we found um, online, uh, a company called Deck Hive. I'm going to just put it in chat right now. I think it was deckhive.com. Um, but another way to use card decks, uh, you know, the Uli deck isn't on there right now, but it was just like, I was really impressed with the tool itself and how it worked. Um, so you may want to kind of put that on your, on your list of check mm -hmm. it out. Can you see this now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're in business. Yes. I, I apologize. <laughs> now you can see why uh, my personality is not those rocks that are stacked up like that. So, <laughs> oh my goodness! I've done you know done enough uh, Zoom workshops. It's like mm. it's been a while though. I was telling Sue, uh, in person has come back in spades for us since uh, since the demise of human connection during COVID. So yeah. So this uh, will actually you can. Uh, so it's a subscription service for, you can do it for by month or, or for the year and it will deal 
different uh, cards. We call this the front side of the cards. So you can just uh, select on it and it will go ahead and pick up a different card uh, that you can play with then uh, in front of a group. And then again, on the card back, the same uh, the same thing. It will it will deal one out, and then you can. So you're dealing account. just one card at a time, though, right? It's it's one at a time. It's okay. one of the, the, it's one of the things that bothers me <laughs> about it, because a lot of the activities, uh, and we we use it. We even use it virtually in some of our workshops, but um, it does have some limited ability. But it does at least allow you to get uh, some cards up on the screen. Um, Excellent. And you can do a number of the How much activities. What is the subscription? Um, you remember? Yeah, I should have that in my head too. I'm thinking it's like five ninety nine a month or sixty bucks for the year, maybe something like that. Um, Got I, it. I think that's the range for it. So, uh, yeah, so that's a that's a possibility as well. Um, so, thank you. Thank you, Rich. For the folks who are on the call, do you have other um, experiences you want to share, questions, challenges that you'd like to ask about? Feel free to um, share and connect with each other. It was a, it was a rich contribution and uh, <laughs> so much information that I, I feel like, you know, there's just so many possibilities. I have a lot of ideas kind of noodling around in my head right now. You know, it's, it's funny. Um, I was just with a group of educators across Indiana. They were in a meeting there in South Bend. And um, I find that once uh, people get a concept of the cards and start to use them and play with them, they recognize that, oh, like in our setting, in our con context we may not do it exactly like you does but we have found our way that these work with our students and uh they become i was at a, a table and there were two organizations that were using them and they were they were talking them up to the other person uh because they they found a way that they really have become helpful for connecting and for working with their students so um we just we love that they're generative and that people can find their own ways to like we love to spark the ideas, but then you're off to the races. It's really uh, only limited by your own imagination. So. Excellent. Well, Rich, thank you very much. Thanks for, for showing and sharing. And uh, thanks for everyone for your participation on the call. I hope this was really helpful and look forward to seeing you all in a few weeks.